Seasonality and trend become two very important concepts when trying to predict time series data. A lot of the model types that you deal with, like LSTM, are not going to just inherently handle seasonality or trend, especially trend. Trend is essentially a situation where, like inflation, the overall buying power of a dollar simply gradually decreases over time, and it has been going on for quite some time. So it's forever marching forward that what you need, the number of dollars that you need for something continues to get higher and higher and higher. If you were to try to have the neural network deal with that, it, neural networks don't extrapolate, so they can't really predict those values going into the future. Because once the, once the numbers get outside of the range that the neural network knows how to deal with, it simply can't predict those anymore. So we need to look at seasonality and trend so that we are able to sort of factor those out of the data set before we have something like an LSTM begin to predict it. And then in the next part, we're gonna look at meta profit, which kind of does this all automatically for you. So we begin by using a data set that I created. I used this on a Kaggle competition with my students back not too long ago. And you're trying to predict demand forecasting. And here you can see the example of sort of the raw sales by date. If you look, you can obviously see, see seasonality going. And there's multiple levels of seasonality. Notice that as the weeks go by, obviously sales are greater on, on the weekends and weaker during the week. You can tell that by hitting the individual values. And then also overall, as the months of the year go through, there's also seasonality based on what month you're in. And this is very common in sales data. There's certainly outliers that occur, occur here. Like here, it was particularly hot. Oh, look at that, it's, it's Christmas. So that's not necessarily an outlier. That's something you can look at as well. So the first thing that you want to potentially do is detrend. Can you remove the trend in the data? And there is a trend. You can see that here we peaked at 10, and then the next year we peak a bit higher, maybe 15. This is because the, the population center that I, that I simulated was increasing over this time. So we're going to detrend it. And to detrend it, we are going to use SciPy, the signal library in, in there, and we're simply going to call and detrend it. And you can see that it has now pulled the trending out of there. Now you're going to train it on the detrended data, and you're going to have to basically make use of the, the line that they give you that is this trend going forward so that you add this back in. We're also going to then deseason it. That doesn't sound very tasty. I would not want my food deseasoned. But this is not. This, this is basically not the, um, this is not food, this is sales. So here we run it through the seasonal decomposition uh, that is in the stats model package. Here you can see basically the item count and you can see where it is figuring out the trend. So what it's calling the trend overall is, it's capturing really two things with this. It is capturing the month, the yearly seasonality that certain months get get higher, and then it's also dealing with it. It is capturing because you can see that bump and that bump are higher, so it is also capturing the overall trend moving forward. Ideally, you'd probably want to separate out those two. You would run it through this multiple times to potentially separate those out but that gets more into what we're, than, than what we're doing here. The residuals, that's just the errors, and you can see where certain parts of it it is not predicting as, as well. And you can see the trends, you can see the adjustments for both the trend and the seasonal. This is useful for you to go then adjust the real data and also use this to apply it to future data uh, so that you can adjust it as, as needed, so that you can de-season, de-trend it for better predictive power. And you can see the resulting data set. 
This is that original data set that we had way, way up, up here. And we're able to basically just take it and get it to the, that's the real signal actually with the seasonality and also the, the, the trends removed. And then in the next part, we're going to look at profit and let it deal with all of this and see some predictions on this data set. Thank you for watching this video. And if this was useful, consider giving me a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the rest of this course or also future projects that I put online. Thank you for watching.